Welcome back, y'all. Video number two for One Way. Uh, this video, we're going to be going over the flooring. This is going to be the first layer of flooring, the sheet metal of the bus, the foundation of how we build a solid floor on top. This one is super important. It holds a special place in my heart because this was around when the bus was starting to feel a little bit overwhelming. It was dirty, there was rust everywhere, and slowly watching it go from that into something I could build on top of that looked clean, it just felt so amazing. And uh, it kind of gave me an extra boost to jump right into the next steps and get the other parts of the bus that you'll see soon in place. So uh, this one is really special to me. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for the support in the last video. It's been amazing. Like so many people were reaching out, saying they enjoyed it, wanting to see more. And I can't wait to bring you guys more content and join the journey of me converting this bus. So let's get into the video. Thank you guys, love you. So in the first video, we kind of followed my journey from me getting the bus all the way up until right before my move where I figured out how to continue with the foundation of the bus. The bus was completely empty, but the rusty sheet metal was still in and I realized I could tear it up. After I had that realization that me just tearing up the old metal exposed pretty solid framing underneath, it allowed me to see the steps into making the foundation the way I wanted. And so it took me about a day or so, but I was able to rip all the metal out, expose that framing. It was a little sketchy because now there's holes everywhere in my floor at the tiptoe. Definitely didn't fall through at all. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> when all of that was up, I could examine the floor and see what I actually had to work with. After taking a close examination of the subflooring of the bus, the framing of the bus, I realized that the rust really wasn't that bad. There was a couple flaky spots here and there on the sides, but after scraping them with my flat bar, I was able to get most of it up. After scraping off all of the big chunks of rust, I saw that there was a patch in the back of the bus that was really corroded. And I thought about it for a while, I was gonna just build over it, but I don't want it to spread and continue like a, you know an infection almost. I wanted to get that out, so I ended up just cutting that out with my angle grinder. That led to some conflict in my thinking later on because I don't know if I want to patch it over or if I want to just leave it exposed. I didn't know if it was going to create a weak spot. It ended up being perfectly fine, but kind of scared me at first, but it ended up, you know, it ended up being good. When I had that section all finished, all cut out, and most of the rust kind of grinded off or at least scraped off, I then, I bought this uh, braided wire wheel and I was able to get real close, really expose that metal, get as much of the rust off as possible. That took a good amount of time because there was a lot more spaces than I thought there were gonna be that had a lot of rust. But uh, yeah, that tool worked amazingly. Over the course of getting the bus to where it's at now, I've gotten a lot of like little injuries but by far the silliest one has probably been with that braided wire brush. I uh, had it on the angle grinder and I was, you know, scraping all the metal off, getting super close, but I was getting a little too comfortable. Guys, when you're using power tools, like make sure you're like always thinking about how something could go wrong so you can avoid that. I uh, was sitting, leg straddling the, the framing and I was getting real close. And then the, the brush had a tendency of like kicking if it hit like a little flared piece of metal. Basically it hit the flared piece of metal and boom, right back into my knee. Thank God it wasn't a crazy big injury. It was just a little scrape. I uh, kind of looked at it once, was thinking my day might be ended. What if it went deep? I looked at it closer. I was like, I'm good. I went back and I was like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't continue because there's dust everywhere. It was getting into cut. So I called it for the day. But overall, besides the injury, it was a great day. I was able to get pretty close to that, that solid metal underneath. It was a little wavy where the rust had eaten into it, but for the most part, I was happy with like painting over that surface. So next day I came back, 
and then I finished all the grinding for the whole bus. You could see both sides. I did a little comparison. The grinded part versus the ungrinded part where it was all flaky and gross. And it looked way better. So after all of the floors were de-rusted, <laughs> scraped and grinded off, uh, the next step I had to do was get all the floors leveled out. In the previous step, I had to get the plywood flooring, the rubber, and all of the previous seats out of the bus. And to do that, most of them, I had to cut the screw heads off just because over the time, rain, whatever it may be, it rusted the screws. So the threads weren't, you know, they just break right off. Uh, so had to go back with my angle grinder and find all the little screw heads poking up and then just get them a little bit closer to the surface so it was flat. That took a good amount of time, but you know, nothing too crazy. When I finally had all of that done, everything was prepped. Now I could finally paint. This was a super exciting time for me because I didn't realize how much the paint was going to transform the way the bus looked. And I, I was already pumped because they looked pretty darn good compared to what they looked like before with all that flaky rust. So I was just ready to get into the next step. Before we get into paint though, just want to put it out there. This stuff takes a lot of time. And as I was going through all of this footage, it kind of blew my mind. I had hours and hours of footage. I'm going to make a separate, you know, I'm probably going to make like a TikTok or definitely going to post it on the Instagram. But uh, this stuff takes a lot of time and it's crazy watching hours and hours of work turn into minutes for a video. And it just makes me appreciate the process and really feel just how much work I'm putting into this. Uh, but if you're enjoying this video, enjoying what's happening, what I'm doing with this bus, drop me a follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, or like this video. Let's get back into the paint. Let's do it. On to the next step. We have to get ourselves ready for paint. This stuff is messy. Don't get it on your skin because when I got it on my arms, that stuff comes off when your skin comes off. So <laughs> I had to live with that for a couple months. The whole painting process though was super satisfying. Uh, I kind of started with the corners around the edges, got all the cracks, make sure I got every square inch. I had to go back and get the underside of the bus because there were some areas that I wasn't quite satisfied with. But man, when I finished the whole bus, it had that mirror finish and you could feel this stuff. It mummified one of my paintbrushes. It made it super solid. This stuff was tough. And you can tell that it wasn't just a paint, like a preventing rust paint. It created a barrier around the bus that would not just stop rust from happening, but seal in any rust. And I do have to thank uh, Chuck Cassidy for uh, a number of things I did. In the next video, he made a big recommendation that I ended up using, but I found this stuff, this chassis saver uh, paint, and this stuff works great. Don't get it on your skin but it works great for, for vehicles. So the next step, now that I had the floor sealed and was pretty confident that any future rust would be halted dramatically, I could actually get the, the new sheeting, the new sheet metal ready. So uh, I got this trim coil. At the time, I was just trying to look for stuff that was the cheapest that would do a pretty darn good job. And I found this trim coil, which is used for roofing and other stuff like that. But it had this weatherproof coating and I was like, this is going on the floor where it's gonna get kicked up by dirt. That weatherproofing would be perfect. So I got trim coil. I had a couple of uh, sheets and I got it for a pretty good price compared to like regular sheet metal because sheet metal prices were way up. But um, yeah, I had to uh, run all of my metal out, figure out where I wanted it to end, figure out the layout that I was doing. And when you're doing stuff like that, just because I know when I have a project I'm trying to do and I get an idea, I leave, a week goes by, I come back and it's gone. I always like to write things down. So it's funny because the note is still right up here on the bus. Uh, yeah, I just drew on the bus. I made a little template. I uh, kind of figured out where all the, uh, all the pieces were gonna go in my head, wrote it down and then laid it out once they were all cut just so I knew exactly what I was doing before I fastened it to the floor. And it kind of worked out perfectly 
that one area that was a little suspect in the back that I had to cut out that I wasn't sure about, it just so turned out I had enough material to run them. But since I had maybe like six inches extra, I could overlap a little bit more on that side of the bus to give it a little bit of extra uh, structure or stability. So that was super awesome. So after I had all the pieces cut to size and I chose the layout that I liked and wanted to go with, I was finally able to screw my new sheet metal in. I uh, went to Home Depot, found the first glue that looked pretty good, like a construction type glue, and it turned out to be a really strong glue. I found out later in my uh, carpentry days. <laughs> but um, yeah, I used that first, put my piece down. The first one's a little sketchy because it was the first one and it always helps to have a second person because yeah, that first piece was stressful. But uh, I actually have it here. This is the glue I used. It's this Loctite PL, three times stronger than original adhesive. I've never seen the original adhesive, so, but it works great. I used that and then to secure it to the floor, I have these Tex weatherproof self-tapping screws. They work so good. They come with this washer that uh, I guess kind of squeezes down and oozes around, creates a nice watertight barrier. Bottom line, I'm trying to have this floor as waterproof as possible. And if anything gets in, I want it to not cause problems. How you do that, don't let it get in in the first place. <laughs> After I had everything glued, screwed, and installed, I had a floor again, and it was so amazing. It was so nice to be able to walk around, not have to tiptoe. I had fallen through the floor like three times, just working hard and like taking a step, slipping, sketchy stuff. But uh, yeah, it felt amazing. It was probably a little overkill, but after all of that, I went back and I took this roofing tape I found and I covered every seam around just so no water could get in at all. That stuff, you squeeze it on and you press it. If you really press, you can let that tar material ooze out and it just created a super strong seal. It probably would have been okay with just the uh, trim coil, the weatherproof trim coil, the uh, screws and the tape, the sealant, probably was fine. But just to be sure that nothing could go wrong, I went back and with that same chassis saver, I did one coat over the whole floor. The chassis saver is designed to kind of grip onto rust and so there being no rust, it kind of pulled up, especially with the uh, weatherproof material or, or texture, whatever it is on the trim coil. Didn't like to stick to it, so it kind of sat in some areas. But my thinking was before it goes through the trim coil, it would have to go through the chassis saver, then it can get to the trim coil. So it was like, you know, overkill, but you know, I liked it and it worked. And also with this project, and especially when I got the trim coil in, this was the first time I was actually putting something into the bus. And so that, that felt so amazing because for months and months and months, it felt like nothing was getting done. I was taking all the panels out and it was just looking worse and worse because I was getting all the demolition done. It was dirty in here, it was messy. And no matter how much I did, it felt like, I wasn't getting closer. And then all of a sudden, almost in a moment, I go from that to now I have a new floor and it looks amazing and it, and it allows me to go into the next step that will allow me to build this dream house of mine. And so this whole trip or this whole journey of getting the new floors in, it just was such a morale boost. And just like that, the first layer of the subflooring was done. I was super proud of myself going from a time where everything kind of felt uncertain and pretty hard and seeing that I could do this. I could put the time, put the effort, put the blood, literally sweat, not so much tears, but <laughs> all that energy into this project and I could make it look good too. Like it came out great uh, and the floor was solid and that gave me a huge morale boost for the next step, which will be the next video getting the actual subflooring and insulation installed. Please let me know if there's any process that you saw that you have some advice on, tips. I'm still learning. This is my first time building a bus and everything is pretty new to me. 
So if you have any tips, any any advice, any any positive words, anything, honestly, I'm all ears. This is a this is a this has been a journey. It's been a process, and I'm learning with each lesson, getting better, making myself understand what comes next, and trying to grow. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video where we tackle our official subfloor and insulation. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Just want to say, when you're working on the bus, when you're working on anything, doing a lot of physical labor, or and take your breaks. For me, I have a frozen matcha latte from Dunkin' Donuts. Best hydration in all the land. Don't overwork yourself. Don't overheat. We got our work cut out for us, but anything is possible. You always have, by the way, always have to end with a corner. Even if you have a good one, scratch it. Go with the corner one, it's better. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, I have a corny joke. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, that was corny. It's all right. Welcome back, everyone. Here's the brakes, back to the bus. <laughs>